Two will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is? Time to hang here with Mr. Cool. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Season 5 still going strong, people. Make sure you go tell your family, your friends, your associates, your haters. Tell them all right now to tune in to blogtalkradio.com forward slash the Bit Scoop with Coop. Also, make sure you do go check out the website, www.thebigscoopwithcoop.com, where you can catch your episodes from Season 1 all the way up to Season 5. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MCOOP317. And we are live right now also on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash the big scoop with Coop. Okay, guys, enough about me. Now, today's guest, this person has been doing big things. I mean, big things in the movie industry. Um, he actually has so many things that's going on with him right now. Um, also, like a new movie that's coming out, it's called The Dust Storm. Ladies and gentlemen, movie director, successful movie director. Let's put it that way. The one, the only, Ryan Layson, welcome to the show. Whoa, thank you, too. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, of course, anytime. How's your day so far? Uh, good, busy, but you can't complain about that. That's know? what I'm talking about. It's a dull moment, so I love to stay, you know, crazy busy. Hey, there you go. There you go. I love it. Now, um, also, just to let you know, on this show right here, we do talk about how you started in your career your success, give advice on how to get started in your career, and much more. Um, so, Ryan, I know your fans are listening worldwide right now, and people that's new to you are listening also. So, let's go on and get this party started. Um, when did you first realize that you wanted to get into, like, the television and the movie industry? Uh, you know, realistically, I really didn't have any doubt. <laughs> Basically, the only thing I knew was movies. Like, I grew up in a very kind of diehard uh, cinema-going family. It's like my mom, my grandmother, huge movie-goer. Mm-hmm. So, like, on the weekends when other kids, you know, outside playing sports or whatever, you know, I was in my sanctuary. I was in the cinema watching movies. So I grew up, you know, just sitting there entranced by, like, you know, like, The Goonies, Godfather, like, all these Ooh. great films. So, at that early age, it was like, this is what I want to do. I want to grow up. I want to be able to tell these stories. I want to get into, like, what makes these characters tick and what they're all about, you know? Mm-hmm. Man, and I can tell from a young age, you've it stuck into your heart and stuck into your mind because look at you now, what you're doing. Um, we're going to talk about that in a second also, exactly, you know, big things that's going on with you and everything. And I always believe at the same time, Ryan, that if you feel that you want to do something at a young age, it's going to stick in the back of your mind and you're going to be ready to go and ready to keep doing it. Even if you start seeing other things that you want to do at the end of the day, you will always come back to that one love and you just proven that right here. Exactly. And I think that's one of the biggest things too, is just knowing it and accepting it. And even for myself too, like I knew like it was the movies, you know, that's what I want to do. But there's even a point when I was in college, my first year, you know, and you, you think like, ah, uh, you know, it would be awesome basically to follow my, my dreams, mm-hmm. but that's tough. You know, maybe I should just get a business degree. Maybe I should just jump into a business because that seems like it's easier, which I don't even know why people think that way. <laughs> but definitely, I had full years, you know, feeling that way. And all of a sudden, one day I woke up, I was like, what am I doing? I'm terrible at, you know, math. And I'm sitting here like in this like business class trying to figure out the fundamentals of that. I'm like, why don't I have a camera in my hands right now? And, you know, I, just, I let that moment, like, kind of switch me, and I went back to kind of everything, like, I've always known and loved and haven't looked back since. Wow. And you know what? I'm not sure if you follow um, Steve Harvey or not, but he actually talked about that um, in this epic video that he's done. It's called Jump. Um, he actually has a book that's out now 
that's called Steve Harvey Jump. And basically in the book, he is actually talking about if you go and if you wake up every morning and you're not feeling what you're you're doing every day, you feel like there's something better for you in life, that means there is something better for you in life. And you have to make that jump and you have to risk and you have to take that chance to actually get it out, um, to go out there to make that leap. Because if you don't, you will always be in the same place as where you're at. And you just proven that again, right there. You just confirmed that. You made the leap and look at you. I mean, this is the only life we have to live. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to make sure every moment counts. I don't want to wake up in the morning at 7 o'clock and, like, hate the fact that I have to go to work <laughs> or hate the fact that I have to spend, you know, X amount of time doing a job I don't love. Right. And film and television, for me personally, is you're spending 12 hours minimum on a film set each day. Sometimes up to, like, 14, 16. It's like you have to love that. You have to, you know, want that and have to, like, be motivated to do that every day. That's true. And for myself personally, you know, I look forward to it. When I'm not like on set, when I'm not making movies, that's the time when I, you know I feel, you know, the most, you know, I guess unhappy, like a pleasant the fact that like I should be out there doing it, which is you know great that constant strive to be able to like, keep working, keep creating, keep maintaining. And you know, since you brought it up, you know, keep working, keep creating, keep ma keep maintaining. Um, what type of obstacles did you go through, you know, to become an award-winning director that you are today? Um, because I know when you started, it couldn't have been just an easy step. You said, okay, I'm going to do this. And next thing you know, you're, you're winning awards. So I know it had to be like at least an yeah. obstacle or two that hit you. Yeah, Jeff, I think the biggest obstacle coup is probably like fear. You know, that, that sense of like, it seems so impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, directing a film, working, even working in the film industry seems like winning the, the golden ticket, at least for me as a child. You know, I, I was, sit there like in my, my bedroom going up like I'm 10 years old you know and I'm like yeah I want to make movies I want to do this but how the heck do I go about that right how do I actually get onto a film set it's not like you know you you graduate from college you do good and all of a sudden like welcome to the film industry here you go <laughs> if you have to be invited you have to earn your way in but there's no clear way of basically trying to get there so I, I for me personally it was just overcoming that sense of a you know, I don't know how the heck to do it. And just basically embracing the sense of, it's going to happen. I have to figure out. I'm going to get this golden ticket. Somehow, I'm not going to worry about exactly the specifics of how I'm going to make it happen, but I know I'm going to make it happen it's some true. way. So that was definitely the biggest obstacle. And I think once I got past that, mm -hmm. once I got over the fear, then it became about the sense of, you know, um, just, getting out there and making stuff, creating content, making art, making, making films. Even if it's like short films, my buddies growing up as a kid to like high school and college, it was just doing the craft and learning the craft. And then it was surrounding myself around the right people too. Cause that, that's a huge obstacle in that sense too. Cause like you look at it as like a filmmaker of, I want to make a film, but that's not just you and a camera. You're not just going to point the camera yourself and you know, boom, you have a movie. It takes, tons of people to basically get together yes. to create something that's good so you basically need to surround yourself by like the right people mm -hmm. and that's and true um something, you know I, I strive for and and i see and you have and basically you know how to do it and it's been proven already um i'm an actor i've been in two movies and i've seen how the director i was under um and a producer and everything I mean, he had to make sure that his team was lined up correctly to actually get the success that he has today. And that has to go with you, too. Um, there's a lot that you, I mean, they wouldn't have said, okay, Ryan, we're going to hire you for this. And if you didn't have your stuff together, trust me, you wouldn't have been back on the scene anymore. And how much stuff that you've done in your career already, I mean, it's amazing. I got to give you a shout out off top, Ryan, for what you've done already. And the thing is, your career is nowhere yeah. close to being over. So I'm just amazed. Yeah. I'm just amazed. Yes. Um, did you have any mentors um, that actually help you prepare to get to where you're at today? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I think everyone that goes into you know the film industry takes like a different path. Everyone kind of goes on their own journey to get and get where they, they end up at. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, too, you know, with the directors, 
they don't ever start out like on set. They just keep like, you know, creating their own films and eventually get them, you know, their first directorial debut. For myself personally, I started off doing production work. You know, I, I graduated okay. from college, you know, I was like, I just want to get onto film set, you know, like a big film set because I want to see basically how everything kind of comes together. So I, I started doing these production jobs out in New Mexico and uh, my first year here in Los Angeles. And doing that, it was basically being able to like be this spectator to see like how these people that I have admired for years go about their craft and stuff like, you know, I could steal or basically take you know, to create what I wanted to do, too. Like, I, I worked under directors like Kevin Smith, mm. you know, a filmmaker who I, I remember being a kid and, like, watching Clerks, and, like, my mind being blown that, like, movies like that, like, were even exist and be made at those times. Right. And Jason Amy, that I feel like it's such a great, uh, relatable relationship film. And I, I worked underneath Kevin Smith for, like, a little bit, and I watched how he talked to his actors, how he responded to, you know, uh, his notes from his DP and all that stuff. And I basically, you'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's a great way. Maybe maybe I should, you know, use a little piece of that. And then I worked under Steven Soderbergh, too, and watching how quick he is and how prepared he is by the time he gets the film set, too, helped inspire me by the time, you know, we went out to direct the dust storm. It was like, once we get the set, especially for, you know, an independent film that doesn't have a ton of money, there's not room for error. You got to get in. You got to be prepared. And watching, you know, Steven work was definitely a great example for me in that sense of, you know, these these guys that made these films that like I admire and that are my top ten favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. And I'm being able to kind of like study and learn from them. So that was, I mean, that was a gift and a blessing, you know, amongst wow. myself. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, that is amazing. I mean, you. You watched them when you was younger, and you have the honor to actually go and work with them. I mean, that's like mentor on steroids right there. That's what that is. And exactly. Yes, yeah. and you can't beat that. And I heard you mention it, so we were going to talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's watching worldwide right now on Facebook, and it's listening worldwide right now on the multiple stations that you're listening to. Um, now, he has a movie that's out. What is coming out is called The Dust Storm. You just heard him mention about it. Ryan, let the whole world know about this movie. What is it about? Hey, uh, The Dust Storm is basically it's a relationship film. At the heart of it, it's just, you know, it's a brutally honest relationship movie about what it's like to basically run into the one who got away and then spend a weekend with him afterwards. And I think for most of us, we can all kind of relate to the sense of having you know, your regrets or having those, like, first-time love. Mm -hmm. And then it breaks up for, like, you know, whatever reason. But you always have this, like, you know, inkling in the back of your mind, like, what if? What if I would have saw them again? What if, I, you know, I spent another day with them? Can you get past the stuff that, you know, you guys broke up over? Can you, can a relationship kind of be reborn and formed? And that's the crux of what the Death Storm is. And it stars two amazing, amazing actors, Colin Donahue, who uh, most people know from uh, playing Captain America and Once Upon a Time, yep. and the lovely and wonderful Kristen Gutowski, who plays Celine on uh, Vampire Diaries and was most recently just in the show Containment. And they play the, uh, the couple that reunites in the city of Nashville. And it's, yeah, and basically for like, the directorial that you, me and uh, my uh, directing partner, Anthony Balbino, we just wanted to, like, go in and say this is going to be basically our first film that showcases, like, who we are. And we wanted to make something that, like, we could relate to, something that, like, we felt honest. And that's why when I wrote this script, I, I, we knew this was going to be our first foray into, you know, the, the film. Nice. The world. Now, how long did it take you to actually write this script? Uh, when I wrote the script, it, it's definitely, I, I've written a lot of scripts, you know, in, in my career and stuff, and each one of them take, like, a different amount of time, but for the dust storm, it happened during a period of my life where, uh, you know, the, the, the subject matter was very, I guess, uh, current for me, so when I started writing, when I put pen to paper, it came out very quickly, it just, it flowed from the pen, so therefore... It, I think within three, four months, the script was basically to a solid point that, you know, we could go out and start shopping and what it's going to make. 
that process definitely took a little bit longer than the actual writing. <laughs> but uh, I'd say all in all, that's probably about like a year to get it out there. We had this amazing casting director named Jessica Sherman who came aboard and helped us to find the ideal cast. Nice. And once we had them, then everything kind of came together. We got our budget, and we uh, flew out to Tennessee and made, made a movie. Nice. Nice. Congratulations. I believe if you're in any type of emotion. Hey, oh, yeah. If I believe if you're in any type of emotion or state of mind, and if you're a writer, that's the best time to grab your pen or this new age, grab your computer, your laptop, start typing because you won't believe what will come out of your mind to the screen or to the paper at the same time. So you, if you, if you have a thought in your mind or if you're feeling some type of way about something, do it, ladies and gentlemen. Grab it, type it, write it down, whatever you have to do because it could be an interesting story one day. It definitely can. Now, um, later on this week, Ryan, I will actually have Anthony Baldino on my show. So can you tell us a little bit about him? What's the experience of working with Anthony? Uh, so Anthony, basically, he was one of the very first people I met when I moved to Los Angeles like nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met on the set of like Wayne's Brothers film, and uh, we just started talking, you know, basically about kind of, you know, what, what films he was in, what films I was into, what kind of stuff inspired us. And then, you know, we just instantly kind of had this rapport in the, you know, in the same sense of like we liked the same type of entertainment. And throughout the years, once we decided basically like, all right, now it's time for us to you know, get out there and make our own stuff. Anthony uh, formed this company called Normal Productions, which basically does commercials and films and, and TV and, you know, uh, music videos. And through then, uh, both of us just started producing a lot of, like, content to just basically get our names and what we wanted to do out into the world. And when it became time that, you know, I had written Dust Storm and I was ready to direct it, you know, there was no better person for me to partner up with in the whole process. Because making a film is it's almost like being in a band, you know. It's, it's true. You're, you're relying on somebody. You're, you're creating with them. You're bringing, you know, challenges. And also, you're also complimenting each other on the art and the entertainment. And he's mm -hmm. definitely a great counterpart to uh, my sense of too. He's also very calm. And I, I do definitely be a little bit more, like, worked <laughs> up and amped up, especially on set. He comes in with kind of this common force. So we definitely balance each other a lot. Nice. And that's what I'm about to say. I believe you all are like counterparts. You're it's like the Transformers when when they actually I don't want to go deep in the eighties, but at one point in time the Transformers could transform into other robots and stack on top of other robots. And I believe for the the people that's eighties babies, you know what I'm talking about. But basically I believe you two fused together are excellent. Cause like I said, look at this. This has happened for you, the dust storm. And I believe that there's going to be more to come. Now, are you willing to work with Anthony again in the future? Yeah, we we, had, we produced this film called She's Allergic to Cats. It's all at film festivals right now. It's doing great. So we, we basically, we partner up on almost everything that, you know, we direct and produce. So it's, it's been a great working relationship, yeah, and hopefully we can do a lot more. Nice. Big shout-outs to you, Anthony. If you're listening to the show today, I'll be talking to you later on this week. Big shout outs to what you and Ryan are doing. You all are doing big things. And I can't wait to hear more from Ryan right now and also you later on this week. Um, now, Ryan, for the people that's new to you, could you tell some of the people, could you tell the people that's listening right now some of the things that you've actually worked on yourself in the television and movie industry? And you pay any play any type of part of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I think going back to kind of what I was mentioning back in the production days with the Kevin Smith and Tim Soderberg, I, I worked on Red State with Kevin Smith and uh, Haywire with uh, Tim Soderberg and then, you know, No Strings Attached with um, Ida Reitman. So that's some of the, the early stuff I did in my early production career to basically just kind of get out there and to learn the craft and do the homework. And then since then, uh, I, I've had a great fortune. You know, I produced this film called Cost and Soul with a great filmmaker named Sean Kirkpatrick, who was a good friend of mine. Uh, me and Anthony produced the She's a Lord's Cast film, uh, directed by Mike Wright, that's, you know, that's cool. Uh, and then we also produced this film called The Desk. And, um, yeah, and then directing-wise, you know, it's been, it's been a good run of, you know, music videos. We, we've done some good commercials. We just partnered up with Guys Etiquette, which is this whole uh, new 
amazing, amazing line of men's products that we're directing commercials for before we go out and uh, make our next film, which hopefully should happen, you know, early next year. Nice. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen worldwide, make sure you do catch up with uh, Ryan. Um, we'll talk about it in a second, how we can try to catch up with Ryan after this show. Um, but, you know, he's doing things, guys. And anybody that's listening right now or watching me right now live, if you're trying to get into the movie industry and the television industry as a producer, director, get you a piece of paper, a pen, take notes to what Ryan is saying, type it down, use it. He's done it. It works. It's a solution that works. Listen to what he has to say. He's doing big things. I'm telling you. Now, Ryan, like I said uh, before, you know, you started early. You, um, you've you done all these other projects. you got stuff coming out in 2017. Um, are there any other projects that you're allowed to talk about right now that you're working on that you'd like to share to the world? At this point, you know, the dust one's definitely getting taken up the most of this year. So when it comes out on December 13th, mm -hmm. after that moment, we'll be able to kind of move on to the next project completely. But we've, we've definitely had some great meetings for the next film. So we're, we've gone pretty close to deciding what it's going to be and what the genre is. Because we kind of, after this, we, you know, we obviously made a relationship-based drama to deciding what is going to be the best follow-up to, which we're almost, you know, secure on, which hopefully we'll be able to announce early next year. Nice. Nice. Now, how can your fans that's listening and the people that's worldwide that's listening also that's new to you, how can they find you on social media? Or are you on social media? The social media, we're basically, for the Dust Arm, it's, it's everywhere. If you Google Dust Arm Film, you'll come up with tons of uh, uh, email addresses for us. But uh, I guess the best is, you know, find us on Twitter, the Dust Arm Film, uh, our website, the Dust Arm Film dot com. And uh, you can definitely jump on there, and there's, like, a, a listing to email. And if you email that, we'll definitely make sure that, you know, it gets to me. Um, so those are probably the two easiest. Nice. And, and I think we're on Facebook, too. And if anyone ever sends a message there, it'll get forwarded over to me. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go to the website, theduststormfilms.com. Make sure you follow them on Twitter. If you find them on Facebook, send them a message. Let them know that you're appreciating this work. And tell them you want more. Because I'm telling you, when you see the dust storm, you're going to want more. So make sure you do go check out everything. Follow Ryan. Follow the whole cast and crew. Make sure you find them all so you can see what's going on, especially in 2017. Big things are going on for Ryan. Make sure you follow him and make sure you keep up with everything that he's actually doing. Um, now, Ryan, what is your ultimate goal? Do? Oh, yes. Um, what is your ultimate goal as far as it goes as a director and a producer? I think the ultimate goal as a director and as a producer and as a writer as well is to just create, uh, to continue to keep creating interesting stories about unique characters. Yeah, I feel like I have a lot of stories still left inside of me that like are just itching to kind of get out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to follow up that with some more, you know, stories that hopefully the audience can enjoy and relate to. And yeah. And that would be the goal, to kind of keep creating, you know, films like some of my idols, you know. Nice. As a long-lasting career in this industry would definitely be a great, you know, goal. Well, Ryan, you're not going anywhere, trust me. Um, like I said, your career is nowhere close to being to the end. So um, I believe you're going to actually live up to your ultimate goal. So I'm not I'm not worried about that part at all. Definitely not. Now, um, oh, yes. Now, Ryan, for the people that's listening at home, uh, what advice would you give any male or female that wants to become a director or a producer in the movie and television industry? Uh, yeah, I guess my the biggest form of advice that I can give is just get serious. You know, if this is, this is something you want to do, do it. Don't quit. Just go out and shoot, shoot, shoot. Make it happen. If you're, if you're a director, you want to be a director, then, you know, this, Especially in Los Angeles, too, or, like, anywhere the film industry is prominent, you'll see so many people that are like, oh, I'm a director, I'm a writer, I'm an actor. And then you're like, okay, cool, like, what's some of the stuff you've directed? And they're like, oh, you know, I haven't shot anything yet, but I want to. I haven't written anything yet, but I plan to. I think, like, no, if you're, if you're a director, you have no excuse, especially with, like, modern-day technology. Go out, shoot a short film. If you're a writer, you know, save up on a bucks, buy a final draft, start your first script, make your first outline, on paper, if you can't afford that, you know, there's no excuse not to be able to, like, create content. 
And also in the same sense, too, the whole, like, get serious part. And that's something I wish someone would call me even from day one, too. Because I, I, I know my first couple of years in college, it was, you know, you're, you're experiencing college, you're experiencing life, and you're doing it on your own path. But, like, you know, there's so many moments then, like, I wish I would hunker down a little bit more, worked a little bit harder, slept in a little bit less, you know, and just made sure I was always working, always striving for that future. Because when you do get that one shot, you know, that one, I guess, opportunity, it's like you want to make sure that you have everything lined up and ready. You know, you get your first agent when they're like, okay, cool, what have you written? You want to be like, here's a stack of good scripts. You know, as, as an uh, actor, you get your first, you know, acting agent or whatever, too. They're like, what have you done? Here's an awesome reel that I've shot. Even if it's not, you know, like big time television shows or movies, right. but here's the work. This is what I can do. And the same thing as a director. The worst thing you can do is get this shot and then blow it. So I it's think true. if anyone is like completely like this is what they have to do, they feel it in, in their body, then do it. You know, don't make excuses. Get out there and make it happen. Hey, that's what I'm talking and, uh, about. Oh, what else I would say too, mm-hmm. something that like I've, I've learned the hard way many times, is when you're creating your art, when you're creating your piece, don't rush. You mm-hmm. know, if, if you're directing like a short, you know, make sure every shot matters. Every shot counts. You know, when you're uh, writing, don't just, you know, finish that first draft and get it out there. Take, take another path. Go through it. Make sure it's good. Because, I mean, once you put stuff out, that art is representation of you, and you want it to be the best that it can be. And granted, you know, there's obviously limitations and obstacles that are going to come in your way, but do the, the most that you can. You know, make it count. Nice. Nice. Now, Ryan, do you have time for one more question? Yeah, throw them at me. Okay. I want you to think hard on this one, what I'm about to um, give to you. This is a last-minute question, and I want to see what you're going to say. Now, I want you to think back to your childhood right now. Um, I want you to think back to the television shows you watched and the movies you watched. I want you to pick one television show of your choice and one movie of your choice if they, if Hollywood or Atlanta or anybody came to you and said, I want you to pick one television show or one movie to remake, which movie and which television show would it be? And why? <laughs> That's a good one. Huh. Uh, it's, tough. it's tough because, you know, all those ones that you love are so good that, you know, yep. I'd, be, I'd be afraid to touch them to remake them. <laughs> I can definitely say, like, you know, movies and shows that I would love to make a movie like. And uh, for me personally, there's obviously there's the movies like Godfather and stuff like that mm. that are instant classics. But I will say, like, as a movie, and this is a little bit higher than my, uh, my childhood. I think I was probably just started my teenage years. But when High Fidelity came out with uh, John Cusack. I remember that. That was a movie I remember watching there. I was in the front row, and it just it was so real. So brutal, so funny, but Cooper was honest, man. Yes. It felt like this is a relationship. And it's even kind of what I try to do with the dust storm is to try to make a film that, like, a young Ryan, a young person like that could go watch and mm-hmm. completely relate to. And then throughout, uh, I guess, my years after that, anytime I'd go through a terrible breakup, I would pop on High Fidelity. Wow. So I'd love to make a movie like that. That, you know, when a guy or a girl is going through a hard time, that's the movie that they're like, all right, I'm going to go home. I'm going to watch this movie. And for that two hours, everything's going to be okay. Or at least I'm going to feel that, like, I'm not the only person in the world going through something like this. Right. That's true. All right, that's the movie. But what about the television show? The television show, yeah. That's, that's a tough one. Yep. Uh, I say so from my childhood, a show that I really loved, was uh, Cheers. Oh. You know, Ted Dance and Woody Harrelson. Yeah. And Cheers was this awesome sense, too. Like, it's something I feel like I'm always still searching for in my life. And that's, <laughs> like, this sense of community, this sense of a place where you go and your friends are there, um, and you can bring in whatever issues you have, and it's it kind of jovial place, yep. you know? And, and I've looked for it in places I've lived. I've looked for it, you know, in bars and coffee shops that I frequent. And that show, I remember turning on, like, you know, every week and just getting into, like, these, these character stories and what kind of shenanigans, what type of, like, obstacles they're into. And I would love to make a TV show, I guess, one day, too, that kind of, like, encompass, like, that type of, of sense. 
okay. you know, camaraderie between like people and also like issues. And I think too, when it comes to like good characters, it, there's you know like obviously relationships is a huge aspect, and just us as humans and what motivates us, and also what deters us in life too. So I think you know a good show that embodies that is key. Nice, nice. Now, Ryan, um, I got one request. If you do in the future ever remake the show Cheers. You have to do the intro just like how they did it on Cheers. You, I mean, I'm talking about how they go classic Got it. present. Yes. Well, Ryan, thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, everyone, we really appreciated it. Um, I would love to have you back on in the future. Absolutely. You let me know when. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we have Ryan Lason on the show. Make sure you go follow him on Twitter. Find his website. Make sure you watch The Dust Storm. Let me know how you think of it. All right, everybody, until the next time on The Big Scoop with Coop. You know what's up?